Okay, so um, I want to keep working on graphing logs. And so if you remember the last video uh, ended with, you know, looking at what's the generic shape or the general shape or the parent function shape of logs and just kind of reviewing some of the transformations, which I can see in my screen um, right here. And so um, every log graph is going to have that characteristic shape of, of A, um, right, where you are close to the asymptote, you go through one zero, and then you sort of extend or being stretched along the x-axis. Um, and so that's sort of like the characteristic shape. Now, um, so the question is, uh, you know, well, what happens if you have different bases, right? Because remember, these count exponents. So, so like, for example, like um, log base 2 of x. So if I want to draw that one, I still know that there's going to be um, like a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So I know that. So at x equals zero. Um, and then I know it's going to go through one, zero. But since it's counting exponents, so like in order to like, so I could say like, oh, if I put a two in there, like that two to the first power. So I'd have to go over two to get up to, to the output of one. And I have to go to two squared, which is four, to get to two. And then I have to go to 2 cubed, which is 8, to get to 3. And I have to get to 2 to the 4th power, which is 16, to get to 4, right? So just counting. So again, looking at, like, why does a log give you this kind of, like, stretch shape is because you're kind of reversing, you know, again, reversing kind of the exponents. So, so that would be your blue one. Okay. So now all of a sudden, let's go to base 3. So if you're base three, that means you have to go count powers of three. So there's still going to be a vertical asymptote. You still are going to go through one, you come a zero. But now you got to go over to three to get up to one. And then you got to go over to three squared, which is nine, to get up to two. And then you got to go over to three cubed, which is 27, which is off the page, right, to get to three. So, so like just by changing from log base two, to log base three, you take a much sharper turn. And you're gonna see what's gonna happen if you go to four, five, and six, right? Um, so, you know, if you go to four, um, so you gotta be counting powers of four, still going through one, comma zero, but now you go over to four to get up to one, and then four squared is 16, just to get to two, right? So, and then I'd have to go to four cube, which is 64. So again, I want you to get this idea that things are being stretched along, you know, the Y or along the X axis uh, to do these logs. And the bigger this number, the more it's getting stretched in the X axis direction. You know, like, oops, if I do five, let's pick a different color, um, just so we kind of compare them. Let's go with this brown color. How nice, right? Um, so if you're doing five, then again, we can still go through one zero, but now I gotta go through five to get to one, because, and then to get to, to two, I gotta go out to 25, which is right, oh, actually probably right there. So again, much, again, it's flatter to, to get out there. So, it, you, you know, it's taking longer for it to rise on the y axis. Um, and then, uh, you know, again, thing log, same thing log base six, you'd have to get out, for example, to 36 just to get up to the height. So what effect does that base have? It makes it um, horizontally stretched. Uh, it, you know, it, it, so that's a good way to think about that. Um, so uh, larger base basically means more uh, horizontally stretched. Right, you're going you're going farther on the x-axis just to get up to a certain y value. Now, um, since these are just sketches, you may not be able to see that flatness, you know, of each graph because it's all relative to your own scale. So that's why it's important to label things. Okay, so um, so let's start graphing some of these uh, functions. And again, thinking about some key pieces, I know that in general the natural log of one, whatever I can put in here to make it a one, will give you zero as the output. Okay. I also know that the natural natural log, and it could be any base, of zero equals does not exist. So if you're trying to make the, the parentheses zero, that's where your vertical asymptote's gonna be. And so that also corresponds to translating left and right. Like for example, I know x minus one is a shift of the log graph to the right one. But if I think about it, if I choose x to be 1, 
and I plug that into the function, I'm going to get natural log of zero, which doesn't exist, which is indicative of that um, vertical asymptote. So here's our x, y axes. And then at x equals one, that's going to be my new vertical asymptote. And then since I, you know, again, trying to create the one, so if I let x be two, two minus one is one, and then that would be our output of zero. So I know that there's an x-intercept of two. Um, and then I can draw my graph. Again, you hug the asymptote, and then you sort of go out in that direction. Now, um, thinking about, you know, how to, what, what's the next value? So if I pick, I need to get e, but I got this minus one, so it's it's shifted to the right one. So, so one point, it's kind of awkward, but I could say e plus one, comma, one, because adding this one will knock out that minus one, and you get natural log of e, which is one. And if I wanted another point, I could say e squared plus one, and then the output would be two. Okay, all right, uh, let's do log base three. So now we're counting base threes, so we're counting for threes, nines, twenty sevens, right? Those are powers of three. But notice this is shifted to the left three units. Um, and again, thinking about, well, whatever I can do to make a zero, that will give me a, a does not exist, or that would give me my vertical asymptote. So y, x. So then I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to draw that vertical asymptote. x equals negative three. And then, you know, um, thinking about trying to get a one, because natural log of one is zero, what value of x would make this parentheses a one? A negative two. Which, which is perfect because we were at one, and if you shifted back three units, you would get negative two. So then we draw our graph. Uh, maybe just a nice little blue color. Hug that asymptote. And then, again, kind of goes off and being stretched in that direction. Now, to count powers uh, of three, so that means um, we would want this set of parentheses to be equal to a three. So because log base three of three is one. So if I let x be zero, 0 plus 3 is 3, log base 3 of 3 is 1. I get to that, right? I've created the 3. Now, create a 9, because 3 squared is 9. So that means x had to go out 6. So go to 6, and then uh, I would get 2. And, you know, if, again, thinking about this 6, um, you know, again, that's they measure it from negative 3, that's 9 units away. And then the 0 is 3 units away. So again, we're going three units away, getting a point. Nine units away, getting a point. And we have to go all the way out to 27 to get the next point. So if you really want to label out here, we could say um, 24, because 24 plus 3 would be 27, and then you get a value of 3. Okay, very good. So um, so let's, let's uh, do another one here. Let's do part C. And then we might um, do the next video for the, the last pieces. So, so for part C, um, it says log negative x plus 4. Remember, this is common log. right? It's base 10, so it's common log. So um, I know that I'll be counting powers of 10. And this negative is a reflection over the y-axis. Um, so, so, you know, and then afterwards, I'm going to add 4 to everything. So, so let's go ahead and get a graph here. Here's our x and y axes. And remember, our normal log graph looks something like this. So this negative is going to reflect it across. So now we really get this. Extending that way. But then we're going to take that image and shift it up four units. So the key piece is that 1, 0, sorry, negative 1, 0, is now going to move up to negative one comma four. So like that's gonna be like the, I guess the big piece to that because uh, a vertical asymptote moved up four, it's not gonna really do anything. So I know that's gonna go through here. So we stretch and then we kind of go to the left like that. So we know that this point right here is negative one, four, and we start counting powers of 10 because log base 10 is 10. So, I, you know, to make this into a, a 10, we better choose negative 10. So way out here, negative 10. 
and then negative 10, making it negative is 10. Log base 10 of 10 is 1, and 1 plus 4 is 5. Or we're 1 unit above that new axis. And then make it 100. So how do I make this a 100? Well, we pick x to be negative 100. So look, I mean, look how far out you are. A base 10, that means to get to the next value, you have to go out to 100. That's the second power of 10. So clearly not drawn to scale. We'll go to negative 100, and that'll kick us up to 6. Because, again, negative, negative 100 becomes 100. That's the second power. So then 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. Okay. Um, but, again, like I think the biggest thing you can take away from this video and graphing is, the, um, is, is this piece right here, right? That the natural log of 1 is 0, and the natural log of 0 is, does not exist. And it could be any logs. It could be log base 10, log base 3. If you can create a 1, you know where your x-intercept is. If you can create a zero, you know where your vertical asymptote is. And that is always true, regardless of any kind of reflection or translation, those will still hold true. And I mean, they'll follow the translations, but it's always a nice starting point to, you know, to, to go from. Okay, so I'll finish up the last examples in the last video.